And we're here with the CTLS on floats. How did this airplane come to be on floats, Tom? We have had uh, quite a bit of interest with customers in, in wanting the airplane on float. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good performing all around airplane and the only thing it was missing is be able to land on the water. So with a lot of inquiries from customers about it, we contacted the manufacturer uh, a couple year, year and a half ago in Canada who is developing these floats, which is a Claymore company, and they make a very nice fit for light sport. So they developed this float for the CT specifically. It will also be used on other light sport planes, but this is the first installation for a light sport, uh, this particular float. What does it take to put an airplane on floats? It sounds like it's a bit of an involved process. For the initial plane to go on floats, you don't know exactly how the airplane is going to react on floats. There's standards on where the center of lift is and where the center of buoyancy, what the separation percentage wise should be there. There's things like water rudders and how they operate. There's things like the degree difference between the angle of the float and the angle of the wings. It should be so many degrees apart because you have to have enough lift on the wing to get the float on step and then at a certain speed it will separate. So all these things need to be done by an expert on designing float installation. We have the floats on here, we've flew, flown the planes, they are very uh, satisfactory, they, flow, they fly good, they land good, they do everything they're supposed to. Now we'll do all the testing on it and that'll be done some in Sturgeon Bay with, with some real experienced float plane pilots and once we're satisfied with that then we'll bring the plane down to Tulsa. We'll fly it in Tulsa with a factory engineer. We'll have video cameras and timers and boats to fly alongside and all this stuff so we know exactly what's happening, when it goes on step, when it breaks the water, when it lifts off, uh, and that all goes back to the factory again and that gets all incorporated into the pilot's handbook. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Tom Gutman Jr., you've done some flying in this airplane. What's it like to fly? Well, like the other Tom said, once you get over the initial uh, shock of going towards the water, then it's a great plane to fly. Um, it definitely flies different than going onto hard service. When you get down to the water, it's going to make some weird noises. You basically, you fly the airplane to the ground. You don't land the airplane on the water, you fly it to the ground. Once you, you have the airplane on the water, you chop the power and it just settles down. So, Tell us a little bit about some of the handling characteristics and how that has changed having floats on the airplane instead of wheels. Well, on the water, there's a lot of different changes. You also obviously are taxing it, I guess you would say, around with a water rudder, where you don't have the positive attached to the ground. You actually are steering around with a rudder, so it's more like a boat. Um, in a windy day, you're going to get a lot of sailing with the airplane. That's kind of one of the biggest things they talk about when you're learning to do your float plane license is sailing the airplane, because you're, you're really depending on what the wind's doing on the airplane. Um, so you got to get over that initially. Once you get onto the hard service, it's taxing around just the same. This airplane used to have a tricycle gear with steerable nose gear. Well, we don't have a steerable nose gear anymore, so now we have differential braking, which that took a little bit to get used to because it is a handbrake mechanism, but that's no different. So it actually, once you get up above about 20 knots or so, it steers with the rudder just like it used to. So it's, it's very easy to fly on the water and on the hard surface. Does it have a different characteristic, a different feel in the air? Honestly, it doesn't. Everybody's asking that same question. It flies very similar. The pitch is almost identical. The roll is almost identical, which is kind of surprising there again. The only real difference I notice is in the rudder. Um, the yaw back and forth, it's a little bit slower, but as far as the roll and pitch, it feels very, very similar to the standard gear plane, but it is a little more sluggish. It's, it's a little bit slower. Obviously, we're losing about 10 knots with it, which everybody we've talked to in the float plane world is very impressed with that. 10 knots is not a bad deal. It's just a little bit slower, it's a little bit heavier. We've added about 200 pounds with the airplane. Even though we've got more gross weight, we've still added the weight to it. So it, it is a little more sluggish, but still flies and handles great for a float plane airplane. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation 
that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. From the marketing side of things, who was your target audience for this airplane? Why did you decide to put one on floats? Well, uh, one reason that the CTLS is a great candidate for a float plane is that it has a good useful load to begin with, and it's clean aerodynamically. Uh, we held off on making a float plane version for a while until we found what we considered a compatible, suitable float system, and that's why we chose the Claymar. We think it really matches the aerodynamic efficiency of the CTLS, and we believe that there is a substantial niche market for a high quality float plane in the LSA category. What are you hearing from the people who are flying the airplane during the flight testing program? Are, they, are you getting good positive feedback out of that? Yeah, they said they were really pleased um, right from the start. The plane got up on step and took off in a, between 14 and 20 seconds, which I understand is a very good takeoff performance. The Gutmans have said that it's very uh, stable on the ground, which is great. And uh, we have a few bugs to work out, but we think it's going to be a great seller. And we're interested in optimizing it from here and offering it as well as a retrofit for existing uh, CTLS owners. You've got a very interesting panel on in that airplane, which you might not normally expect to see in an LSA. Why did you choose the panel that you did? We've kind of pushed the envelope with uh, the EFASES, going with the dual Dynon panel very early on and uh, it's been very good for our company. Dynon's been a great company to work with. The D100, uh, D120 EFIS EMS system actually has very simple buttonology and uh, there's really been no resistance from our target demographic group with it. We thought that there would be an issue and absolutely not. We are the largest selling light sport aircraft in the American market with over 325 airplanes in the field now. We think we're doing pretty well. Have you started taking orders yet? And how many orders have you taken, if you're at liberty to say? Well, it's only the second day of the show. I know we've seen a tremendous amount of interest. And uh, I'm sure we're going to sell a few by the end. But I, I really don't know. How does this fit in with your overall line of airplanes? Where do you see this as fitting into the, um, the flight design line? Well, we think it's great. Um, we have a model called the CTLS Lite that we recently brought out, which is a lighter, less content equipped version and that'll equal useful load for this application and we think it's going to be very suitable and we think it's going to be popular. I had a chance to fly the MC down in Sebring just briefly for a little bit less than an hour and I was impressed with that airplane. Um, is there an opportunity to put something like the MC on floats as well or is it going to strictly be the CTLS? There's no reason not to put the MC on floats. Very good. Well Tom Pigeny, thank you very much for talking with us on Aero TV. You're welcome indeed. <laughs>